play his first one, you got to start realizing what type of problem it is. So I like to call binomial problems, I like to call them NPQ problems. 68% of college students say something, which means there's how, what percentage of them don't agree with that? 32. P and Q, right there, two situations. We choose 22, okay, I got a total number. That's an NPQ problem. You guys, everybody with me? Yes. So there's a certain look to these problems. It is very obviously not an X, P of X problem because I didn't give you a table of X's and P of X's. So don't try to force it to be that. Poor little problem. So N is? 20. 20. 22. Two. P is? Point. Point. Six, eight. eight. And then? Q is? Point three, two. And in this first problem, what's X? 13. So I got 22 people choose? 13. 13. So I got how many successes? 13, how many failures? Two, uh, nine. Nine. How did I get nine? 32, subtract. Yeah, that's, the, that's whoever's left over for the other one. If 13 are in the first camp, nine are left for the other one. Okay. And then when you plug that in, what do you guys get? 1163? One, one, yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. All right. So depending on if you have the, so the newer calculators will look like this, 22, choose, 13. So they actually have little subscripts. That sort of sucks, because you have to remember to hit over to come back up. If you have an older calculator, it's got 22 NCR 13 all on one line, you just keep going. Times 0.68. Here's your to the button, to the, and there's another situation, Ah, oh, shit, I gotta hit over to come down, times 0.32 to the ninth, and I'm done putting shit in, so I can just hit enter. Thank God, all right. Everybody all right, you guys all right? You guys aren't okay, I know this already, I'll stop asking, but this, you guys understand that problem? All right. We need a fall break. I know, but we don't have it too late. Um, probably, now this one is a perfect example of the at least one thing, but it's the more general idea. At le less than 21 would be what? Zero, one, two, Zero, one, two three, up to? 20. You want to do a formula for all of those and add them up. You could, you get the right answer, but my God, that take a long time. What's the opposite of that? What's the only thing that leaves out? Zero to 20. The only thing it leaves out is 20, 21, 22. 22. So I really want you guys to understand this. I'm going to answer the question as if it was the opposite of what they asked me. I'm going to answer the question at least 21. The question's going to be angry at me for a second, and then I'm going to do one minus what I got, and that'll actually answer the question, because how, that's how I make it the opposite. This is the thing I was talking about. Guys, in the back. If you have a probability question and there's just too much work, think about what the opposite of that situation is. If it's got less work, shit yes. And this one's got a hell of a lot less work. So if I do the formula for 21, and if I do it for 22, add them together, that's the opposite of what it wants. So then I just do one minus that. And then the answer is what he wants. So I need a formula for 22. I mean, sorry, let's do 21. So I'm going to do 1 minus the probability that x is at least 21. Because that has a lot less work. So here's the one for 21, right? 0 0.68 to the 21, 0 0.32 to the first power. And the 22, now I want to do one for 22. 0.68 to the 22, 0.32 to the nothing. If I add those together, that'll answer the opposite of the question they asked, which is okay, because I'm not done yet, right? I'm not gonna tell a person this number, I'm gonna do one minus, and then give it that. So let's see what we get. 
22. Choose 21. Times 0.68 to the 21. Times 0.32 to the 1. Didn't have to do that, Jeff. Too bad. I'm just going to keep going. Plus 22. Oh, right. Now we're having fun, kids. Choose 22. 0.68. The times in there, dude. Times 0.68 to the 22. 10. I don't really need to do this, but what the shit? You guys with me? I'm not going to put them in individually, so I don't have to worry about anybody that's like really small or something. Why, why did um, that become a zero? What become a zero? The, um, the, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't think right now. <laughs> the, one, the one at the very end of the problem. It is a zero right there. No, right. like it was a one, then it became a zero. Like you added the two together. Like it was 22 choose 21, yes. etc. And then you did plus 22 choose 22. And then, yeah. So if I have 22 successes, that's all of them. Yeah. How many are left over to be failures? Oh, okay. None of them. Okay. These two always have to add up to be the total number, yeah. And so I get this. So that is not the answer, right? No. Thank you. So then I do one minus that. That's the answer. 0.9977. All right. In my experience, you either get that or you really, really don't. Wish to God you could see that it's nothing that big. If I add it up, the probability is zero, all the way to the probability 22. If I add them all up, what do I get? One. So if I do one minus any chunk, I get the other chunk. So one minus 21, 22 is going to equal the probability of zero up to 20. That's what we just did. That's all we just did. It asked me for the probability zero to 20. And I did 1 minus 21, 22. So I answered the question. I just did it in a clever way. Ooh, look at me. So I had less work to do. OK. Because I love it when students are like, you made this test so long. No, I didn't. I didn't do that. Um, so will I have a problem like this one? Hell yeah, obviously. That's why I'm spending so much time on this shit. All right. Uh, what about this one? So let's see. What do we know for this problem number two? N is 211. P is 0.12. I like it. Q is 0.88. And then on this first problem, X is 19. So for this whole problem, these are true. You with me? Just because I ask a different question, I can't suddenly change the percentage of people that think a certain way. That would be weird. I think this. He asks a question, oh shit, I think a different way now. No, that would be neat, but that's not the way things work. So this one's not that bad, right? It's just like the first one. So it should be 211, choose 19. So I want 19 successes, and I want how many failures? 192. The rest of them, right? These both make 211 together. What do you guys get when you put that in there? Point two? Zero three six two. Zero three six two. Let me see what I get. Not that I don't trust you. Did I do that too quickly? No. It's all right. I get point zero three six two. Yes. Sweet. I get. Okay. This is the best freaking formulas yet for these things. What's the formula for the mean? And P, shit yes. 211 times 0. 0.12. What do you guys get? 25, 25. 32. 25 point, ooh, 13? Uh, 32. 32. 32. Yeah. Are we with me so far? What's the one for the standard deviation? It's the mean times the square root of N, P, Q. So square root of 211 times 0. 0.12 times 0. 0.88. And what do you get? 4.72. 4.7. Two, zero, three. Two, zero, three. Zero, three. Four point seven two zero. 
Is that what you guys got? 7203. Okay. Um, if we do, like, say you on the test or something, you said use it, make your answer using formulas, and you put um, standard deviation equals the square root of the name times Q seven. Oh, wrong? you're fine. No? But yeah, that's what I would do in the calculator, but that doesn't mean you have to write it differently. Okay. You technically could say the formula is that. Yeah. But that's what I do in the calculator. Okay. I agree with you. But so just make the formula NPQ, so it's because oh, okay. that'll stick to that in your NPQ. But you're right, you're right. Who remembers this? This is from that last handout we did. How far out do you have to go before things get unusual? Two standard, standard deviations. So is it just the border with like the last two, or now there's like the mean and then the two standard deviations? So you got the mean in the middle, 25.32. And I want to go up two steps and down two steps. Jeff, what language are you writing for you? That's even worse, Jeff. So I got 25.32 in the middle. What's two steps up? So two of these up. 34.764. I like it. So if you add this twice to the mean, you get what do you get? 34 points? 7.61. 76, blah, blah, blah. And if you go two steps down, Blah, blah, blah. Okay. We stop for a second. You guys with me? Why is the max and min like that? Because if I go two steps down and up, in a normal curve, I catch 95% of the data. And so that would leave 5%. Even for just something that's not normal, I catch at least 75% of the data. So it's still where most of the stuff is. So outside of two steps, there's not that much stuff, which means it would be unusual. How many people are shorter than four feet tall? Not many is a good answer to that question, right? Are there many people who are shorter than four feet tall? Do you guys know somebody who's shorter than four feet tall? And I don't mean was in a movie. <laughs> not many, right? Are you guys with me? So that would be unusual to see that because that's not a height that occurs often. They're more than two steps away from the mean height. So would it be unusual to find 14? Yes. Yes, because it is less than the Good. Less than the minimum usual. Yeah, so yes. So outside the usual range, you could say. Or you could say less than the minimum usual. Sorry, what you got? So that's kind of like related to how to find outliers. Outlier. So 14 workers would be unusual to see. Is that impossible? No. Does it mean that something's different there? No. But it's evidence that something might be. Almost done. Are you with me? I mean, those are the questions I like to ask. So this one's not too bad. Uh, for some reason, it always takes me at least a minute. And then like I told a few of you guys, at 12 minutes, I just kind of accept that I'm gonna live where I am, wherever I am. <laughs> um, so what's the height there? One over 11, because it's 11 wide. And that is true for this whole problem, because the situation is me and my keys. So it's probably takes between 7 and 11. So this is how you do it. That's the picture, right? And this is 4, so it'll be 4 times 1 11. 4 11. What is it, 0. 0.3636? Why does it make sense real quick? Because 9 times 11 is 99. That's almost out of 100. So 9 times 4 is 36. Just a little bit about 36. Anyway. What about within the first five minutes? This is a little bit trippy, but for some reason, it always takes me at least one minute. So within the first five minutes, 
How wide is that region I'm talking about? Four. Four times one eleven, so four eleven. Same answer. This doesn't mean shit. <laughs> it doesn't mean shit. Probably get a two on a die. It's the same as the probably get a three on a die. It doesn't mean shit. Doesn't mean they're related or whatever. It's just there's one side as a two and there's one side as a three. So it's okay if they come out the same. Doesn't mean anything. Um, what about these two here? More than 12 minutes? Yeah, there's nothing out here. And what about probably takes me exactly eight minutes? Zero probability. Okay, that's enough. So next time we'll look at the other side. You can read through that now if you want to or, you know, whatever. And we'll do that quiz first thing. Oh, shit. You gotta wanna review the XP of X stuff. That's 4 1 and 4 2. Don't forget your IDs and stuff. Please.